Okay, for the last part of this lecture, we're going to look a little bit at the cytoskeleton. So inside the cell, there are fibers that crisscross throughout the cell and also strengthen underneath the, just on the inner side of the plasma membrane. And they also create a highway system for materials to be moved around the cell. So if you thought the cell was just full of liquid, it is full of liquid, but there is, as you can see in this top image, this is like a, an image of a cell with everything taken away except for, uh, in this case, the intermediate filaments. So you can see that they crisscross and they also go just underneath where the plasma membrane would be. And you can see how they go around, but not into the nucleus. So it's kind of interesting. Um, there are three types of fibers. There are microfilaments, microtubules, and intermediate filaments. And the microfilaments are the thinnest of the filaments, of the cytoskeletal fibers, I should say. The microtubules are the thickest, although these things are all very small. And the intermediate filaments, as you can guess, are intermediate in diameter. And we're not talking about length, we're talking about the diameter of the fiber. And so you have these fibers all throughout the cell. The three fibers are made up of components. So microtubules are made up of a protein called tubulin. Trying to get my pen to come on. There it is. So the microtubule is the entire structure, but it's made up of many, many, many individual proteins. So each one of these little sort of bead-shaped structures is a separate um, polypeptide folded into its three-dimensional shape. And then you have just thousands and thousands and thousands of these organized in a, a way that creates a tube like a drinking straw where the plastic part of the straw is composed of all of these tubulin proteins and you have so many of them and it has a hollow center it creates a tube and I'm going to include a little video that shows you how the microtubules are built and how they are deconstructed kind of visually but it's the addition or the removal of these tubulin proteins to make the entire microtubule. But microtubules have the largest diameter if you measure across the tube. The length can be variable, but the diameter is much larger than the diameter of a microfilament. Microfilament has a smaller diameter, and it's really these strands, these straight chains. And those, these little polypeptides here, that's a protein called actin. So tubulin is the protein that comes together in a quaternary structure to make the microtubules. Actin is the polypeptide that comes together, thousands of them string together to make a microfilament. So this is a good example of quaternary structure because you have many separate polypeptides attaching together to make the larger structure. So you need to know actin is the protein that's in the microfilaments. Tubulin is the protein in the microtubules. Intermediate filaments have an in, a, a diameter, I guess you could say, that's in between that of the microtubules and that of the microfilaments. And they actually don't have a single protein that's involved, but one of the most common components of the intermediate filaments that I will mention is a protein called keratin. And keratin is a protein that makes intermediate filaments inside the cell. It also makes the main part of your fingernails, for example. So keratin is a very, um, it's 
there's a lot of keratin in your body, inside your cells, and in the case of your fingernails, outside of your cells. One thing you'll notice about proteins is not always, but very often they end in the letters IN. So that's that can be a hint that it's a protein if it if the name of it ends in IN. If you you know if you have to guess on a question, that could be a something that could help you. Um, so outside the cell, the cytoskeletal fibers, so here are all the fibers crisscrossing, like I said, just underneath the plasma membrane in this image. And this is the plasma membrane. We'll talk a bit more about that in chapter five. And then outside the cell, there's also fibers that crisscross, but it's different kinds of fibers on the outside of the cell. And the fibers that are on the outside of the cell um, are, the most common one is collagen. And I don't know why collagen ends with an E-N instead of an I-N, but I didn't make that decision. But then there's also something called fibronectin. And there are some polysaccharides also attached here. So proteins and polysaccharides on the outside of the cell. And that mesh of, of materials on the outside of the cell is called the extracellular matrix. And the extracellular matrix is a secretion, something that was made inside the cell and then delivered to the surface of the cell and secreted out of the cell, but then it sort of stayed right there and sort of connected to the outer surface of the cell. So the extracellular matrix are all, uh, primarily collagen and fibronectin and some polysaccharides that create this network on the outside. So that's called the extracellular matrix. In between two cells, there are connections that are called junctions. So junctions are points of connection for two cells. So you have the, the cell membrane, the membrane of one cell here. And you can imagine the cell, you know, like that. And then just a piece of this membrane of this other cell here. For example, I'm trying to draw the rest of the cell. So you kind of see where these two cells touch. Some cells have these connections. Um, a gap junction is a connection between two cell membranes, two cells. It, punch, it goes through both membranes. And it actually allows things to go directly from the cytoplasm of one cell into the cytoplasm of the other cell directly. It's a little bit like um, there's a fastener that you can use sometimes called a grommet. A grommet, or um, I don't think grommet's the right word. That would be a fastener that you can use to fasten two things together and still leave a hole that that something can pass through. So I always think of it as kind of like the a grommet. But if you don't do any um, any work in the garage, uh, so to speak, you might not know what a grommet is. But in any case, it's called a gap junction. Um, there, and the gap junctions are only um, involved with animal cells. A very similar, though, type of junction exists between two plant cells, but that junction is called the plasmodesma. Sorry, they, I didn't make up these names. Plasmodesma is singular, and plasmodesmata is plural. So in this picture, you have a one plasmodesma, it's just a connection that directly connects the cytoplasm of two cells so that liquid or materials can pass through uh, from one cell to the next directly. And there are gap junctions. Um, by the way, some neural cells have gap junctions that directly connect them. Um, what else would have gap junctions in animals? You'll learn about those in your anatomy and physiology. Now, tight junctions also exist in animal cells, but it's not so much a grommet as a rivet. A rivet. Again, something from a construction terminology. So rivet is not a biology word. The biology word would be a tight junction, but it's conceptually like a rivet where you have two cells and their cell membranes are connected 
So you have this, this it's made of proteins that punches through both cells, but it doesn't create a pore. It doesn't create a uh, place for anything to go from one cell into the other. This is literally just like a nail that connects two cells together. It's just a connector. It doesn't allow any movement of materials across that. It's not a pore. And the last one, the last junction that we're going to learn, and these are really like definitions and, you know, terminology and definitions, is the desmosome. A desmosome is a junction that I always think of as like um, a little Velcro, a little spot of Velcro. Again, this is an analogy. But you guys know Velcro, there's two pieces. There's the soft loopy piece and there's the plasticky spiky piece and then you push those two things together and they hold. So it kind of has that sense. You have a little spot, a little desmosome on one cell and, an, and a similar one on the other cell. And it, there's kind of this pokey stuff that pokes through the membrane in this little patch. There's something that pokes through the other cell's membrane in this little patch and they attach. It does not create a channel, so it's not a gap junction. So tight junctions and desmosomes just attach two cells together um, gap junctions and plasmodesma not only attach the cells, but also allow for movement of materials between the two cells. So I'm going to put a link up that is a link to a video that's pretty well known. It's from, um, sorry, get rid of this. I didn't like that at all. Um, it's a video called The Inner Life of the Cell. And I have posted just the link. It was made by um, Harvard. Uh, actually, Harvard hired a company to make it. And it shows a lot of really cool stuff. It doesn't actually show everything that goes on in a cell, but it shows a lot of things. And I did put the link down here in case this is not working, but you can watch this on YouTube. And then I'm also going to post one in which I narrate what's happening at each point. So if you're very visual, I think that's very helpful. And I do want you to watch this because what you're seeing, what's been chosen as the thumbnail, is um, a protein called kinesin. And when you think of vesicles moving around in the cell, you might think that they just kind of float around, but actually they move along. What's shown here is this is a microtubule down here, making a little highway at the bottom. Kinesin is called a motor protein. That's this guy in the middle. And the motor protein pulls the vesicle, which is this huge round thing here. It pulls it and it sort of walks along the microtubule as it pulls the vesicle. So, and you can see another one in the background kind of faded away. You'll be able to see in the video um, other motor, motor proteins that are pooling their vesicles along these little highways. So the microtubules make these tracks for the motor proteins, specifically kinesin is focused on in this video, to pull the vesicles around. So the vesicles aren't just like floating around on their own. They're being intentionally moved from one place to another place. And I've emphasized in this lecture sort of the order of events for two of the processes of the cell. And you need to be able to explain those order of events for the intracellular digestion and also for the, um, the endomembrane system, how things are moved from the rough ER to the Golgi out to the plasma membrane, for example. And so you can see some of that in this video and especially in the narrated version.